Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to DSP Reacts to the John and Rambo response video from 2015. So far, uh, whew, we haven't gotten too far into it, but that's because I talked a lot. But now we're going to get heavily into it, all right? If you have not seen part one already, I strongly recommend you go check it out first or else you're going to have no idea what's going on. That has all the references you need to get up to this point. Um, thank you for watching. There's no monetization on this video at all of any form. If you see it, it's not me. Someone claimed the video. I'm not doing that. Okay, let's continue. Here we go. About me, about others, man. So, And uh, again, if people get pissed listening to this, as a consolation prize, if you really think about it, if you're a fan of Phil's, you have to agree that I did, and I know you did to an extent, everything you could to help him over the years. You know, and so much so, so that to this day, he makes money off of videos that we're in to this day, every day. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, 10 cents, whether it's 10 bucks, whatever the hell it is. He's making money off, you know, off of it, work we did for him every single day. Mm -hmm. He's and right. he's still finding new ways to, to monetize us. Well, uh, not today. Based on that video. Not today, John. Maybe, maybe up to this point, but not today. If I was going to do this React, there was no way I was going to monetize it um, for good reason. Like I said, that's the major point he says. No, not monetizing this whatsoever. And uh, it's too important. It's too important to monetize. It really is. Okay. <clears throat> Video and uh, other things that go on. Yeah, pretty and much. And by the way, again, running theme money. Oh, I don't care about the money. It's not about the money. But then they keep bringing up money, being monetized. We'll talk about that because John will directly address it later. So it's a weird that it's an ongoing issue if there's no issue. Okay. No. Oops. Okay. And then I, I think, I, I really think that like, uh it really it really it's really like a testament as to what what he held our friendships for because it feel it's, it seems that the money was more important than us being his friend yeah i mean that's how you feel yeah that's i'm sad that they feel that's... i'm really sad that they feel that way i really 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 am sad that they feel that way because as i said over the years to you guys to me it was like we were friends we would hang out we were going to hang out regardless and have fun. So if you can put a silly camera down and record what you're doing and make money doing it, why not? Right? Like to me, I was doing YouTube as a hobby for two and a half years before I could even put ads on my videos and make a living doing it. Right? John was in my content before I could monetize it. We were having fun already. So to me, it was like, let's hang out. Let's have a good time together. Hey, by the way, we can make money doing it. Why the fuck not? Right? To them, it seems to be like that's that's not a case. Um, that because there was money involved, that that wasn't like friends hanging out. To me, it was. The entire time we did Project 7, was it work? Yes. But was it a bunch of friends working together and having a shitload of fun doing it? Hell yes. That was a really cool experience. So what's the issue with the money-making part of it? That I didn't understand. Um, and again, never brought up. It wasn't like... They complained and said, Phil, you know, we really don't have enough stuff that happens without the cameras on. Phil, it would be great if we could hang out today and you didn't record. And by the way, that did happen a lot. You know, we went to a convention. I wasn't recording every moment that we were there. Uh, when we went over to Howard's house to play Super Turbo frequently because he had cabinets there, he recorded and broadcast all of that, not me. I didn't record while we were there at all usually. Um, I, that was just me having fun with those guys, okay? So it wasn't like every single interaction I had with these guys, the camera was on. They definitely are saying that in this video many times. That wasn't the case, but that's definitely like how they're spinning it. Whenever John Rambo came over to do a weekly co-op with me, which we would do Smart Guys, our wrestling commentary show, and then we would actually do gameplay co-op, we would have like an hour to two hours of conversation before we ever even took a camera out, just shooting the shit, hanging out, having a good time, talking about our lives, right? Like I said, I felt like I was actually really close friends with John Rambo. I don't know if he felt the same way, you know, or that it was reciprocated, but I felt that way for sure. Like, he was the guy who uh, I, I kind of opened up to about stuff. Was that on camera? No. A lot of stuff was on camera, but that was the fun part. Was oh, let's play games and dick around. Let's talk about wrestling and make a buck on it. But not, not the other stuff. And 
there, there's private conversations we had over the years that none of us have ever talked about publicly, you know, private shit about me and, and him about him. And we would never talk about that publicly. Like we had, we were friends to me when they say, Oh, you know, it was only about the money for Phil that gets to me badly. That, that hurts because that's not the case with John with, with Howard. Again, we never had that close personal friendship. He would come over to be in other co-op shit we were doing or project seven, but how John, I don't know how he could possibly say that. Really? That's really hurtful to me for them to say something like that. When John and I, I feel did have a real friendship. We were hanging out playing street fighter together before I ever turned on a camera for YouTube from 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009. How can you say we didn't have a friendship? And it was only about the money when we had that friendship way before YouTube was a thing that blows my mind. You can watch, go watch the videos that are out there. But understand that there's history behind it that you didn't know, you know? And it seems like he's just saying, oh, we were only friends during the YouTube years. That's completely false. It's completely false, all right? But what I will say is this. When I became a full-time YouTuber, I became a workaholic. And I worked my ass off, constantly making videos, seven days a week. I did not have a day off when I started monetizing my videos on YouTube in 2011, 2012. It was Mr. No Days Off. I'm just here to pump out videos for the internet and make money on them, right? That was my life. I loved it. I loved gaming and everything, but that was absolutely positively my life. Um, was there time that I made to hang out with these guys outside of that? Every once in a while, if I went over to play Super Turbo at Howard's house and we were all there together, or going to a convention. We went to several conventions and events together, and even though, yes, I filmed there, the vast majority of the time that I spent at those events was not filming. It was spending time hanging out with these guys, okay? So, again, this is, I feel, a misrepresentation of the situation. Absolutely, there was a ridiculous amount of filming and monetization of the time we spent together, but there was definitely friendship behind there as well. Again, it, Howard, whatever. Say whatever you want. We weren't close friends. John, we were. And that's incredibly hurtful to me that he says this. Like, all we ever did was record and make videos together and make money. That wasn't the case at all. Um, and sadly, after I moved, it just got worse because now he's not there to be in person with and have the conversation. So instead, it became text messages back and forth. And he didn't like that. He wanted me to call him. And I really couldn't. And we'll talk about that because he's going to bring that up later specifically. And we'll address it at that point why there were no phone calls between us after I moved. All right, we'll get to that. But anyway... <clears throat> Let's continue now because they're going to get to a certain point. That's that's how I feel because, you know, I, I don't know. There's like a whole bunch of things that we got to talk about, and I don't want to go ahead go. And, and go out of turn. All right. But, I, got, I got you. Yeah. I'll try to keep this, uh, you know, keep this rolling here. Yeah. Um, in that video, uh, he says, this is the Thanksgiving video I'm talking about. He says, we just he, watched about, he says they talked shit about me. I don't know if you caught that part. I didn't say that. You could go back in this very video, or actually it was part one. I didn't say that. What I said was, you know, if you, and this was me being very stupid. Say, essentially what I was saying was, don't be passive aggressive. If you have an issue with someone, come out and say it. Don't talk shit. Don't hide the truth. I never said that they did talk shit about me. Okay? I never actually outright say that in the video. Can you say that I insinuated it? Yes. Can you say that I said it? No, because I never said it. What I was saying was, I'm not the kind of person who would do that. That's actually how I phrased that. I said, I wouldn't talk shit. I wouldn't do that. If I have an issue with someone, I tell them to their face about it. Okay? That's the point I was making in that video. <clears throat> However, John did talk shit about me. And we're about to watch it because he glosses over it in this video um, without actually showing the actual evidence of like what he's talking about. And now you're going to see it because, by the way, this is really where this video is where the big problem started with my trolls getting interjected into the situation. It was this very video you guys are about to see that started all the problems with the trolls harassing us on both sides. Let's do it. Yep. yep. And I'm not exactly sure what that is in reference to. Now, there was a video I put out, the Pay Me Tons parody, right? Yep. Hi. Here it is. My name is John, and I'm special because I upload videos to the internet. But being so important does have its dark side. In fact, it means that my life is much more difficult than everyone else's. While you're following the average path of working a traditional job 
attending school, or perhaps both, I'm following my dreams and busting my ass. Talking over video games, posting breakfast pics, and vlogging about movies that I hate. Creative things, and as we all know, creativity is fueled by pure cash. This is why I've opened a Pay Me Tons account. It's an internet website that allows people like me to receive lots of creativity from people like you. Simply log in and transfer the entirety of your bank account into my Pay Me Tons account. I won't even get out of bed for less than $50. And then together, we'll make sure that the world, well, my world, is a much more creative place. I'm not sure where we talk shit about him. I mean, we made that Pay Me Tons parody that says Dark Side in it. <laughs> but I'm not sure where we talk shit about him, okay? Now, for the record, I think this is funny. I do. I laugh at this. I think this is fucking hilarious. This is a razzing, okay? But this is a razzing that happens, okay? In early 2015. It might have been late 2014, but I'm pretty sure it was early 2015. This happened on John Rambo's podcast. This was an open, like a cold open to his podcast, okay? <clears throat> At the time... No, and now I know it was early 2015, because that's when I opened my Patreon. So it was early 2015. At this point, a year, it's almost a year has happened, okay? Almost a year has happened, all right? S or since I moved. I've been trying to, to, to have constant contact with John and have conversation, figure out what's going on with him. Is he okay? Figure out where we're going to make content. And every time that I texted him, I felt like he felt like I was always about asking about videos or content. And that wasn't the case. I never felt like every time that I would reach out to John, it was about let's make videos, let's make videos. I was genuinely interested in how he was doing and everything that because he was in a, a very stressful time where he was making Schnozman a whole punch and a lot of other stuff was going on. He actually talks about this in this video, so it's okay for me to say this is not private. He already talks about it in this video, okay? So this was the time frame, like mid to late 2014, early 2015. John stops directly responding to me. He stops responding to my texts and everything, okay? People are constantly asking me, Phil, what is going on with you and John? Why, you know, are you going to do content with him? Is he talking? What's going on? All right. I should have said, fuck off. None of your business. That's where, okay. Maybe not fuck off. That's kind of harsh. Maybe I should have said, none of your business. Don't ask me that question. It's between me and John. But instead I would constantly, oh, I don't know. Everything's fine. Maybe we're going to do content later this year. I'll let you know. Oh, John. And then sometimes I would sadly reveal information. If John did text me back, I would say something I out of turn. I shouldn't have said that was private. My fault. All that I'll take responsibility for. Okay. John's not talking to me actively at all everyone suspects there's an issue there but i'm not being truthful truth is i don't know what the issue is but he's not talking to me anymore after months of not talking to me he puts this out so what do you think the people on the internet think this is it this is even if he's saying it's not about me even though it says dark side in it it's about me okay what do you think people think wow john out of nowhere out of left field just slammed phil Phil hasn't said anything bad or insulting about John, but John just slammed him. Wow. He fired the first shot. And that's the funny part because they said in this video, Phil fired the first shot. Okay. Me unfollowing them on Thanksgiving was firing the first shot, according to Howard. Um, no, I was not trying to hurt them by unfollowing them on Thanksgiving. This is a direct, intentional, concerted effort, a produced segment of a show slamming me for opening a Patreon. Has my name in it. You can't dispute it's about me. Sorry, you just can't. Okay? Now, the funny part is, in that Thanksgiving video that I made in 2015, I never said that they talked shit about me. I said if I was someone in a situation that had an issue, I would be public about it, confront someone to their face about it, and not talk shit. I never said they did. They did, but I never said they did. All of a sudden, they're bringing it up in this video. They're even referencing this Pay Me Ton segment. Why? 
because either one of two things. They're feeling guilty because John made the segment and it absolutely was about me. So this is a way for them to try to deflect that and say it wasn't. Or because everyone construed it as thus and messaged the shit out of them saying, why did you make this about Phil when he hasn't said anything negative about you? Why are you slamming him in this video? I don't understand. Okay. Now, personally, I didn't take this as a direct insult. And they're actually going to talk about that. So let's continue. Let's switch back over here. Okay. Here we go. And it's a parody, man. I've done parodies in the past. Just to give you... It's a parody that has my name in it. If it has someone's name in it, it's not a parody. A parody is a caricature of a person making fun of something. Not... So you directly reference my name. So it is actually a slam on me. It's not a parody. A parody would have been, you know, a cartoonish content creator who isn't me, but maybe could be construed as me. You said dark side in the video. That's not a parody anymore. You've you've passed the realm of parody when you name drop someone. Yeah, the okay? whole idea I've done parodies about machinima. I did a, a YouTube parody where YouTube was a uh, a talking uh, vagina a vagina robot that ran yep. YouTube. His parodies in the past, Machinima, the partner network that everyone knew that I was with for the longest period of time, YouTube, the website that I put videos on for a living. You see the running pattern here? Oh, I've done parodies in the past. Oh, by the way, every parody just happens to also be related to Phil. <laughs> what a coinky dink, right? What a, what a shocking coincidence that they all actually are related to things that have to do with Phil. Those others didn't name drop me, though. This one did. Okay. I've done GameStop. You know, et cetera, et cetera. Comes out, man. Oh, and I, you, you, you missed that. He said GameStop, et cetera, et cetera. He did do a parody on GameStop. GameStop unfairly fired him because he was in my videos. We were at a tournament way back when, I think it was, I want to say 2009, 2010. We're at a Street Fighter tournament together. I'm filming. He's working for GameStop, and in the video, we're in a different game store. And he's basically saying things like, this is the best game store. They used that video, my video, as grounds to terminate him. Now, it's completely wrong. It shouldn't have ever happened. They were in the wrong for doing that. He made a giant later on. He, he talked all about this in his podcast. And he did a big parody segment about GameStop. Okay? So, what does he do parodies about? Things that he feel have wronged him or things that, that you know, are bad in relation to him. And all of it has to do with me somehow. Right? Okay. People get a little crazy about it. So, two weeks later, you know, you and I were on, uh, doing the show. And we explained it wasn't singling him out, you know. It has my it name was, in uh, it. was about many, many things. And not necessarily in a hateful manner. Like, I think you can make fun of something. That I agree with. And uh, really not feel negatively about it at all, actually. Completely agree. Yeah. Like, Saturday Night Live, you know, Phil Hartman would uh, dress as Bill Clinton. I don't think he wanted to assassinate the president. Very, very bad analogy, <clears throat> okay, because he's saying Phil Hartman impersonates Bill Clinton. He doesn't want to assassinate the president. True. That's absolutely true. Um, but in this case, this was a different situation. No one was asking Bill Hartman, hey, Bill Hartman, didn't you used to have a friendship with, with Bill Clinton? Phil Hartman, excuse me. Didn't you have a friendship with Bill Clinton and you're not talking to him anymore even though he keeps saying he wants to talk to you, you're ghosting him, and now all of a sudden you drop this video on him? There's a difference. It's, it's context. The context is there's a sketch comedy show at night that makes fun of everything equal and isn't ill-intentioned Ill, Ill at all versus someone who everyone wants to know why you're not talking to Phil you won't tell Phil or anyone else, and now you make a, a video that could be construed as a negative video about Phil. It's a completely different situation that he fails to really understand why it was construed by the internet like that. Again, I don't think it was actually intended, all right, as a video to be hurtful to me. I think he thought it was funny. I think it's funny, but you have to put it in context of the time. If he had released that video two years prior when we were still active friends and he was in my content or whatever that would have been different this is a situation where he's ghosting me he's not in my content like he said he would be and then he puts that out of course the internet is going to say that's a hit piece on phil why'd you do it and he got harassed for it. basically he got a lot of trolling for it at that time okay right yep it's, uh, it's having a good time with something and that was really my uh what was it about <clears throat> man now was he like an inspiration for the character 
that I was portraying in that. To yeah, sure, to an extent, you know. But again, not in a malicious, uh, hateful way. I believe that. It's having some fun with something. Um, but it's not. Again, it's, 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 I think it's hard to say it's directly about one person. Except this is dark side yeah, in it. Yeah, it was a whole thing. The whole thing was about that. The pay me, or pay me. Wow, Patreon right. uh, uh, website. You know. And now here comes Howard with a little segment I like to call Howard Deflects. Because this is going to happen many, many times during this video. Let's see how Howard can deflect this one off of them doing something wrong. You know, what people do and, you know, and, and then what it is too, it's, it's when, you, when you look at it, it's, it's, it's to basically shed light on some of the negativity that, that revolves around that site and not only that site, but Kickstarter. Mm. Look at all the shenanigans that has, has gone, that has transpired in the past like few years where people like raise up all this money, promise a, a product, and then, and then basically everyone's SOL. They, they took the money and people are fucked. Mm. You know, look at what happened with, you know, look at the disaster that uh, Inafune is going out with that uh, mighty number nine. That's still not out. Yeah, I'm uh, waiting for that one. Looking for you know? it, uh, hopefully it comes soon. <clears throat> Howard feels that a Pay Me Tons parody about Patreon, the content of which directly name drops me, makes fun of someone who basically is a content creator who does video content like playing games, commenting over food, etc., and asking for monetary compensation for said work, is the equivalent of a Kickstarter campaign where a company does not provide a product for a contractual basis that is agreed to in said campaign for fundraising. Patreon is not Kickstarter. They're not even close to being the same. All right. He brings up a game in a Fune's Mighty Number no. Nine, which did eventually come out, did live up to all expectations. Of course, at this point, it didn't. So he didn't know that 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 was going to happen. But he's essentially saying, if you have a Patreon, you are taking someone's money and running and never producing said content that you promised to produce. That's what he's saying. Okay. That Pay Me Tons segment was made in early 2015. There was no controversy around my Patreon at that point. This video was made later on in 2015 after that had happened, okay? If you want to know the, the skinny on that, again, you can go watch me referring to the Down the Rabbit Hole video, Dark Side Phil. We go into that whole Patreon situation, okay? So over the course of the year that this is out, they changed the narrative. Oh, this wasn't about us just making fun of filmmaking content. You see, this is us criticizing Kickstarter as a whole and saying that people aren't living up to the, the, the goals that they're promising or whatever, which is actually in, incidentally one of the controversies that I was embroiled in at the time with Patreon. Okay? So, it's he's completely deflecting. My name is in the parody. You can't deny it's about me. If they had not put Darkseid in there, you can argue that. My name, Darkseid, is in the parody. It's about me. Directly. Personally, do I think that it was an actual meaningful, meaning, mean insult? No. People told me about this. I watched it back myself, and I responded publicly and said, I don't think that's an insult towards me. It's kind of a funny joke. Yeah, it's razzing me, but they're not directly insulting me in this video. I don't believe it is. Okay? So if that's the case, why are they bringing it up in their video? Right? I outright said it's not an insult. I didn't say in my Thanksgiving 2015 video that they had talked shit about me. I said if I was someone who had an issue with someone else, I would say it to their face and I would not talk shit or anything like that. I'm telling you what I would do if I were in their situation. I didn't say they did it. You could say that I insinuated it, but I never said it. They are actually, in my opinion, <clears throat> guilty. They're feeling guilty that they made that, or John feels guilty that he made that. And to the point where so many people contacted him saying, you know, that's kind of mean-spirited. You made that about Phil at a time when you were kind of not talking to him and you were supposed to be in his content and you're not. And this is kind of messed up. You did it. And he's got this underlying guilt that he made it. And now he has to talk about it to defend himself in this video when I never brought it up. I, I Again, I outright said, and he'll even say this, I outright said, it's not about me. He's not insulting me. So why, John, are you bringing it up in this video then? I don't understand. And then why did you have Howard deflect the whole situation say it was about Kickstarter? Patreon is not Kickstarter. They're two completely separate businesses with different intentions. It's not even equivalent. It's like apples and oranges. Massive deflection and an epic fail of a deflection right there. So yeah. people make promises 
and they don't, you know, go through with them. And that's basically what the parody was about, you know? Yeah, because I mean, I hate, well, you know, I hate yeah. nothing to do with Kickstarter. I hate people that use it or something. No, I really, honestly, if everyone on there, hope you, like, everyone gets a million dollars a month. Yeah. Like, what it doesn't, again, it doesn't affect me in any way. John, if you say things like, I hope that everyone out there makes a million dollars a month, it doesn't affect me, then why are you saying it? If it doesn't affect you, why are you saying it? Because it affects you. Listen, I'm guilty of this too. Why do I sometimes name drop other content creators that are bigger and more successful than me? Because I'm jealous. That's why. Yes, I'm jealous of PewDiePie. Yes, I'm jealous of Markiplier. They're rich. I'm not. I'm jealous of them. Why do you think I bring them up? Right? You can. Why would you even have a parody of that in your show unless you're somehow affected by it and feel that it's meaningful to you? It's a false narrative. He is affected by this. Money was a factor or else it, none of this shit would have been brought up ever. If it really didn't bother him, he wouldn't make the parody about it. He's trying to bring light, a humorous light to something that he feels maybe is kind of wrong. Not outright hurtful or criminal, but wrong. He doesn't agree that people make content and have a Patreon so people can support it with finances like that. He doesn't agree with that. That's why he made that clip. Don't then say, oh, it doesn't affect me. I hope you're all rich. No, you wouldn't have made the clip if it didn't affect you. It's complete bullshit. I know, because I'm a bullshitter too, and I've done it over the years with these other guys. Yes, you are 100% you're affected by this, or you wouldn't have made it. It's, it's just, it's cause and effect, man. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. But again, my, my main thing was like looking around YouTube and, and seeing that no one has done a parody of this, which is interesting. <laughs> no, is one, because... no one ever made a parody of Patreon, according to John here. Okay. Because, you know, people want to have one and they don't want to make fun of it or something, or, you know, <clears throat> or they, they'll be called a hypocrite if they have one or something. So I felt like, oh, I could get away, I could get away with making fun of this thing. Because uh, I'm not looking to really make money on this or really have the option. <laughs> I'm not really looking to make money or I don't really have the option. It's all in the way he says it. Not that he doesn't wish that he could make money. He doesn't have the option to do it. And that's why he's making parodies about Patreon, people trying to make a living doing it. He doesn't feel he will he could be successful doing it. He says it right there. Yep. So I put it out, and, and here's a little secret for you. I, I don't really matter that much on YouTube. It's not a video that got a billion views Now here we go. Now he's, really... da now he's downplaying himself on you. Oh, I'm not popular on YouTube. This is again going with his narrative. I can't make a living doing it. It's okay for me to make the parody. He's punching up essentially is what he's saying. I can make that parody because I'm punching up. True, but you're punching up at me who's supposed to be your friend, right? You're you, my name is in the video. You're punching up at someone who's your friend. You're punching up at someone who, why did I open the Patreon? Because I was having financial difficulties at the time. And by making that parody, you're t you want to say, who shot the first shot? I mean, okay, maybe you say unfollowing someone on Twitter is shooting the first shot. I say this is the first situation. This is the first outright kind of aggressiveness. Well, you can use passive aggressive. It's still aggressiveness towards me from John, okay? C can you really say it affected you in a negative way? Yes. And despite all that... Yes. I was mass messaged by people constantly. Phil, why did John insult you? Phil, are you weird? John insulted you? Here, here it is. They're tweeting me. They were emailing me. It was on my video comments. It was on my stream comments. It was everywhere I went. John hates you. And it was toxic shit, and it made me feel like shit. Not that John made it, but that everyone was harassing me about it. Yes, it did absolutely, positively, negatively affect me. Again, 2015 was one of the worst years of my life. All this negative shit was piling up. This was just the cherry on top of the shit Sunday. All this other shit going on. Do I really need someone who's supposed to be my friend piling on as well? Of course not. But it happened. We came out and said it wasn't directly about him. We wished him the very best. And uh, just said we're not going to be part of his stuff. Nope. And, uh, that didn't happen. We said it wasn't about him. We wished him the very best. and said we're not going to be a part of his stuff. That never happened. <laughs> Did they say it wasn't about me? Yes. Did they ever say, all right, we're outright saying to the public, we're not going to be a part of Phil's stuff? No. That was part of the problem, that they never did that. They were doing that, and they'll actually admit this later on in the video. 
they were doing this behind the scenes. They were talking to people in person that they ran into and people were like, hey, whatever happened to you and, and, and Phil, you're going to do anything with them? And John would basically tell, no, we don't associate with him anymore. But they didn't tell me. Again, it's it's the passive aggressiveness and it's not, it's, it's being half truthful. Yes, they did tell people we're not going to associate, but not publicly. So everyone was constantly pounding me with requests as to why aren't you doing something with John? What's going on with John? And I had no answers. How was that? So I don't see how that's talking shit about, we're talking shit about him. On top of that, after the Pay Me Tons video came out, he publicly said, if John does a skit making fun of Patron, it doesn't mean he's correct. talking shit about me. Co absolutely correct. I I'd said like, that. I'd like to know. Yeah. Where was the shit talk? Right. It's like one of those things where but you I can... didn't say, But I didn't say you should, I should, you should talk to me. I never said it. We just watched the video. I said, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't shit talk. I didn't say you did. You can say there's an insinuation there, but that's a jump. And no, I wasn't saying that they had shit talked me. Um, they are feeling guilty about this Pay Me Tons video all year long because people said, hey, you basically insulted Phil with this. And now they're projecting that onto me when I didn't say something that, I, that they're saying I said, you see. Um, I outright said that they didn't insult me. So why is this even an issue and why is this being discussed? I have no idea. Just put, say something in a video. It's like, oh, they talk shit, but you have no didn't say examples they talk of shit. this? So people just kind of go, oh, they talk shit. They must, they must have done it. But I didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you know, it, it's just one of those things that people like, I feel bad because he doesn't know how to uh, let go of things. I guess people like, you know, and this happens with anything. You know, people jam you with stuff. Yep, on like right. Twitter, and they prod you and prod you and yes. prod you to try we're to get a response Twitter. out of it. And he fell right into the shenanigans. Yeah, you know what? And we're falling yeah. into it right now because us, honestly, yeah, we're I think falling he's... into it right now too because he 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 threw a shot, and then we're we didn't want to throw the shot, but now we have to throw the shot. Yeah, and it's it's weird. It's weird timing. Why why yeah. did you pick that day at that time? You know. So it's weird because now I don't even know what they're talking about. Are they talking about when I unfollowed them on Twitter in 2014? Or are they talking about the video I put out in my holiday Ask the King that I always do on Thanksgiving in 2015? I actually have no idea which, which they're even talking about. Because again, already they've already jumped from 2015 to 2014 to the Pay Me Tons segment. It's Where's the timeline? What are they even talking about? I don't know. I actually have no idea. Okay? Um, But... I agree with Howard. I have always been terrible at damage control. I have always had an issue where if I get attacked from multiple directions, and back then it was way worse, by the way. Today, we got our shit under control, right? We do. Today, you got a ton of people in the, in the chat being dicks to me right now. I'm not paying any attention. I don't care. It doesn't bother me anymore, you know? But back then, if people came on me at Twitter, at me, you know, came at me in my, my video comments, came at me in my stream chat, on my forums. I fell for it. Hook, line, and motherfucking sinker. Motherfucking sinker, bro. bro. I just yomp like a big fish. Here, oh, there's a worm. Ah, I eat that shit. I fell for it all the time. I always took the bait. I always got angry. This is what people were doing. They were troll baiting me constantly. Ultimate taking of the bait. I was such an idiot. And I would get upset about shit for no fucking reason that I never should have got upset about. I let these trolls get to me. That is why... For sure, that is why things got so bad with the internet and me, with this is how you don't plays and shit. They're like, the worse that we get, the more we get to fill and the better reaction we get. And Howard, 100% correct here, all right? I was the public-facing figure, not them. Did they have their own internet shit going on? Yes, but I was the one who made a living on the internet. So I was the one who saw it every single day. Every video, every stream, every comment, everywhere. Where's Where's John? What's going on with John? Why isn't John in the, in the video? Why isn't he making the videos with you? What did you do to John? Why? Why, Phil? Why did you ruin John's friendship with you? And I'm like, what the fuck, man? So then I would say dumb shit. I would. I would completely say dumb shit that was out of turn, that was insulting, that was dumb, that was revealing private information, and it's all wrong. I have no defense against that at all. Zero. I did it. It's wrong. They're going to bring up instances of it. Can't defend it. All right? At least today, if you haven't noticed, 
we do have things better under control when it comes to things, comments on the streams and things like that. It's not a constant toxic universe anymore. The, I would argue <clears throat> that the universe of Dark Side Phil at one point was a very toxic place to be. We have definitely improved that over the years, okay? But no, I can't defend it. Howard, absolutely correct in this statement. I was completely guilty of this shit. Okay. Uh, like we did the show th uh, Wednesday, and we were like talking shit, or, or there's anything that has to do with them. It's like it's a it's a uh, it's a vet, it's a attempted at trolling. Yeah. It's uh, l let me say something. Hopefully they'll respond. Then I could come back with something else, and I create a whole situation of drama around That's myself. That's not true. You know, and uh, I think this is what he wanted us to do. This is why I haven't done this uh, ever until now. Despite him, you know, running me down on his forums, on Twitter, and, and his we'll chat. talk about that. You know, and bought, like, tried to do stuff on the sneak. But I catch wind of all this stuff, man. People send me all this stuff. Yeah. And for and the most then, part, I don't, I don't look at it, but with things like this happen, I'll go through and see what's, what's going down. So, he's saying there's a campaign against him. Like, I was constantly trying to, like, talk shit about him and bring him down and stuff. Again, that wasn't the intention, but again, it's troll bait. Trolls baiting me into saying dumb shit or trying to get emotion out of me, right, about the situation. Specifically, he doesn't bring up any specifics, so I can't directly react to what he's saying and say, oh, here's what I meant or whatever, so I don't know. I can confirm it happened. Happened on Twitter, happened on my forums. My forums, my God, there was like two or three assholes on my forums who would constantly pelt me with shit about this and try to get this out, and I would fall for it. Every time I typed a paragraph that I fell for, oh my God, I did it again, I did it again. But here's the thing. He's trying to kind of say that, like, I'm doing it behind the scenes. Everything I did was public. My forums are public. You can see them right now. I didn't delete the posts. My Twitter's public. My videos are public. Everything's public. It's not like Phil is is trying to do a underhanded backstabbing campaign where he's bad-mouthing John behind the scenes and shit. I did it in public. I mean, maybe that's even worse, right? But it seems like he's trying to say, like, oh, I got wind of it. No, John, you got wind of it because my trolls baited me, and then they sent you my responses. They did it on purpose. It was a concerted campaign. They tried to get me to react badly so that you would see me react badly and be angry with me. I mean, I fell for it, and then you did too, you know? This was absolutely them trying to create friction between us, and I was guilty because I was the one with the public face. Again, I was the one who got attacked with it every day. How are you going to reach John? Hit him with a video comment, tweet him. He doesn't even check his Twitter that often. You don't have other ways. I had to be public every day. It was my job. He didn't have to, okay? But in reality, I'm guilty of this. You know, again, I fess up to it. But absolutely, John bit hook, line, and sinker too. When the trolls sent him, he's like, oh, I got wind of it. How did you get wind of it? Because the troll sent it to you, dude. I mean, how did you not realize who it was? They were getting me to say stupid shit so that they could show it to you and you'd be mad at me. That was the point. That was what they were intending to do to begin with. You see? Okay, let's continue. Um, you know... It's an attempt to it's an attempt to get something going. Oh, and by the yeah. way, he says this is an attempt to get something going. The reason he he's talking like this, and the reason he made that Thanksgiving video that we watched at the very beginning, is because he wants to say something, then we'll say something, then he'll say something. It'll be drama going back and forth for for attention on the internet. Wrong. All right, I'm going to reveal this later uh, in depth. But the reason that I did that in that Thanksgiving video was because I needed to prompt an action. Because in my life, I had a lot of fucked up stuff going on. This was one of them. I was actually having a lot of problems behind the scenes mentally because of what a bad year it was for me. Um, we'll talk more about that because there's a specific segment of this video that addresses things. You're like, I don't understand. And when I explain, you'll understand. Um, but I never in my wildest dreams expected they were going to do a public video like this. First of all, Howard at all. Howard has nothing to do with it. But John, um, I never expected it. I thought this would be the straw that broke the camel's back that he would either call me or re start responding to my texts again and say what was going on. Because again, he had been ghosting me essentially for almost a year at this point when I made that Thanksgiving video 2015, okay? So that's what I thought. I thought, all right, if there really is an issue, which he always said there was never an issue. He never said there was an issue. He would on ongoing tell me, oh God. All right, everybody, what's... <laughs> okay, that's the wrong video. I guess we got to get out of there. There we go. Try it. I was oh, God. Now we're at the end of the video. 
Anyway, he would outright tell me when he did respond, there was no issue. Don't worry, there's no issue. If there is an issue, we're going to work it out. I'm going to be in your content. It's things on my side and yada, 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 that kind of shit. And then, um, he just stopped responding entirely. And when he stops responding entirely, it's like, like, dude, come on, at least be honest or truthful or upfront and transparent with me, you know? Um, and he wouldn't be. He would just ghost me. So I thought making that Thanksgiving video would prompt him to finally reach out. And even if, if it was, Phil, I've had enough, okay? I seriously had enough about with you. I don't ever want to be your friend again. At least if he had done that, there would have been closure, okay? That's what I was looking for, closure. Because there was, it was open-ended. And people were constantly hounding me about this and wouldn't leave it alone. And I was like, the only way I'm ever going to get closure is to force the hand. Is that fucked up? Yes. Is that wrong? Yes. It is. I shouldn't have ever done that. It's fucked up to put him in that stressful situation um, that he was in because of me. Absolutely, that was wrong to do. And I shouldn't have done it. But I did it because a lot of things going on in my life that will be explained later in the video. Now I got to find where we are. Up shit. <laughs> Yep. So I put it out, and, and here's a little secret for you. I, I don't really matter that. No, here we go. It's like it's a it's a it's a vet, it's a attempted trolling. Here we are. Yep. It's uh, l let me say something. Hopefully they'll respond. I didn't want to respond publicly. I just wanted him to respond to me in general. It's been a year since he was myself. talking to me. You know. I just wanted and, uh, anything. I think this is what he wanted us to do. This is why I haven't done this. Uh, ever until now, despite him, you know, running me down on his forums, on Twitter, on, on his chat, you know, we already did this. And so. Like try to play. do stuff on the sneak, but I catch wind of all this stuff, man. People send me all this stuff. Yeah, and for the most then... part, I don't, I don't look at it. But with things like this happen, I'll go through and see what's what's going down. <clears throat> um, you know, it's an attempt to, it's an attempt to get something going. Yeah, and he falls victim to it on a consistent basis. Yeah. And he doesn't, he has an issue, like a really big issue with damage control. Yeah. Like he doesn't know here. how to ignore things. I agree here. 100%. So this is why right. we're in the situation that we're in now, is because of that. Yeah. You know, there was no need for him to make, to address this. He could have just let it go, and that was it. Mm. But. We'll me, talk. I don't know if you three wanna, months. I, three months after we last spoke about him, in a in a positive way that we spoke about him, let's choose just three months randomly, <clears throat> and just say some stuff. And that, but again, that was three months. John didn't ever think about me, hear about me. I was getting it constant. My trolls were all over me constantly about it. Man, Phil, you really fucked up that relationship with Rambo because that was a good thing you had going. You was your friend, and look what you did. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't know anything. There's no public information about this at all. But that's what I got every day, you know. Um, and it, it, it just festered and it got toxic inside of me that I felt like shit over this, all right? And again, why did I? Why did this come up? It was Ask the King on Thanksgiving. That's my Thanksgiving thing that I do every year. Uh, I don't know if I specifically do it anymore. I'm mean, seven, eight years later. But, you know, I used to do it every Thanksgiving at the holiday Ask the King. And it's a question that came up. And I felt that this would actually give it closure because from my end it was it was one of two things was going to happen either they ignore it completely they never respond in which case i say that was my last word on the subject never talking about it ever again or they respond behind the scenes i find out what's actually going on maybe we have a resolution we work things out and we're friends again or maybe not and if not at least there's closure closure is better than than nothing in my opinion like that's what was my mindset back then was even if the closure is a negative closure, and this is the end, and this is John saying, I hate you, don't ever talk to me ever again, you're a scumbag. I'd rather have that than, oh, I just ghost you forever, and who knows what happened, right? So, in reality, what happened was I got my answers, just not in the way that I was expecting, and it blew up completely in my face because now everyone publicly thought that I was a scoundrel, a scumbag, a piece of garbage because of this video. Um, again, I'm not going to dispute that there's things I've done wrong, all right? Let's continue. Then, not only that, every single time we've been out in the field and people have asked us about him, all we do is we don't associate with him anymore, but we wish him the best of luck. Yeah. Remember that guy that we met at the YouTube studios? Yeah, he yeah, asks yeah. Us the same question that we say, we always give the same answer. Yeah, man. We're not. 
they would go out in public and tell people, we don't associate with Phil anymore. We wish him the best. But they wouldn't tell me. <laughs> They're telling other people, but not me. So again, I'm the one left with the public face to the to the internet thousands of people who want answers i have none and they won't give me the answer but they'll tell someone at the youtube studios oh we're done with phil we're not going to deal with him anymore how about me <laughs> you know i'm here to bash anybody <clears throat> but at the same time we're not here to take shit from anybody either <laughs> yeah there's enough there's enough and uh we, we always talk about it you know as i always say hopefully we don't have to do this yeah we talk about this on it's a sad. consistent it's basis. disgusting it's sad but uh here we are, man. So, yeah. And again, I want to, I'm gonna like spill this out. This isn't an attack. This isn't like an, just an attack. Like this is all the shit that went down. There's things that are out there that he put out there, mm -hmm. things other people believe that are not true. Yeah. So I have to defend. All right, he's gonna bring up the subject of money now. Um, he's right, but it's because. All right, I'm not even going to get ahead. I'll let him talk, and then we'll we'll address it, okay? Um, so really, my last feelings on the subject of... Because now they're going to move on. My last feelings on the subject of the, the Thanksgiving 2015 Ask the King, which is how this whole started, all right? I was completely in the wrong for saying what I said um, and doing that. At the same time, they had been ghosting me for about a year. The only contact I have with them is them is John making a Pay Me Tons parody that essentially has my name in it, so it, it is a slam against me, even though I thought it was funny, it's still a slam against me, and everyone sees it like that, all right? They continue to ignore me for the rest of the year. All the viewers and fans are asking why. I don't know, but they're telling everyone publicly that they run into, oh, we don't associate with Phil anymore, we don't like him, uh, you know, but we wish him the best. I don't know that, right? Things are just getting worse and worse for me in 2015. Again, piling on, on of shit, the, D, the DDoSing, the swatting, my relationship falling apart, my YouTube channel uh, getting destroyed, and this was just the other fucked up thing behind everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it just kept festering to the point where I wanted a closure. And what I did got a closure, but sadly it was a public closure. I just wanted them to say, hey, enough is enough. We don't want to be your friend anymore. Leave us alone. Which they never did. And they still didn't. Because in this video, they don't say that either. Although, obviously, if you make a 90-minute negative video about someone, that's pretty much what you're saying. Okay. Myself, we have to dispel some things. So I want to get into a couple things here, man. There we go. So, first one I want to talk about, which is disgusting, man, is money, okay? You ever told, like, you shouldn't talk about money? You ever... You ever oh, you yeah, ever all tell the time. You that? All the time. Yeah. This is not me complaining oh, about I hear it money, every day. because honestly, from my side of things, I know some other people... Uh, in our in our circle, uh, don't agree, but uh, I believe I was treated fairly with with money. But the problem is, info that's been presented to you is not exactly true. So it's something. That okay. John feels that he was treated fairly with money, but people in their circle don't agree. Who? What are you talking about? This is about you and me. This is not about people in your circle. And what did you tell them? So you told people in your circle what money you were making in our videos. Other people knew, okay? It wasn't just me on one side. He was telling people all around him what kind of money he was making, apparently, and they said it wasn't enough. So there's the seed of, oh, you're not happy. You shouldn't be happy with that. You should have more, right? Um, again, John said earlier, this isn't about money. I don't care what other, everyone else makes around me. I, you know, He says here, Phil treated me fairly with money. But now he's about to have a whole segment about money. So why? If you feel you were, you were treated fairly, right? Why are you doing a segment about money? He says, oh, because there's some misinformation. Even if there was misinformation, who cares? You were treated fairly with money. How is this an issue? Right? And then he says, the circle of friends. I, I Again, when I watch this video, and I've watched it many, many times over the years. This is a seven-year-old video. There is this reference to a circle of people behind the scenes who are basically, which sounds to me, they're poisoning the well. They're looking at the situation as outsiders, right? And they're telling John, hey, John, you were treated badly. This was bad. Why were, you know, meanwhile, John and I are having a blast. We're making content. We're making money. We're having a good time together. There's no, there's no ill will there. All right. But who, what is this circle of friends telling you you didn't make enough money? And why are you listening to them if you feel like you did? 
right? This comes up later. There's other topics where they start saying, oh, you know, people in our friend circle said this and that. What? <clears throat> why, why, is this, why is this in discussed in your friend circle? This is you and me, our friendship, our business relationship. Why is this being poisoned by others? This is weird to me to hear him say it like this. It's very telling that there's other stuff going on that you don't know about until this video comes out, okay? Anyway, let's see what John has to say about money, which he said you shouldn't talk about. That he <clears throat> says quite often, John got 50%, he got half of everything that I made, that we made together, or videos I was in with him, right? And again, Howard, like, why is this something that's said publicly? This you, should have happened. come up with any kind of there, uh, reason? There is, there, is, um, there is no reason to say mm. this unless he's, A, he's lying, or B, he's trying to save face. I'm trying to save face because at this time, again, when did I start talking about that shit publicly? 2014, 2015. Because people started, again, maybe mostly trolls, but people saying, Phil, why is John on your content? Phil, John said he would be in your content and he's ignoring you. Why? Did you not pay him? And that was a big thing. People always wanted to make it about money when John never had an issue with money. Never once did he say to me, I'm not getting paid enough for my work. Um, <clears throat> and so I never thought it was an issue. Now, I have no idea when I started talking about it publicly, nor do I know the context because I couldn't find it. I'm sure people will find it now, and that's fine. Because I'm going to tell you, I know I said it. I know that I said this, that I paid John 50%. I know I, I should, should I have said that. Probably not. At the same time, do you feel that if you were getting paid 50% of the money being made on a project that's a co-op, is that enough? Right? I'm trying to be fair. Um, people were constantly attacking me, telling me that I was not paying John. Like, this was an ongoing thing with my trolls, that Phil was a scumbag who ripped off John and never paid him, or didn't pay him enough, and he was pocketing all the money and being the big guy who was rich and everything, and John was getting nothing, and I was basically using his work and profiting off of it and all that, and it couldn't have been further from the truth, as we're about to discuss... But this became a common meme, much like all the memes about me today that are stupid bullshit. The more that people say something, the more they will believe it, whether or not there's any evidence at all. There was no evidence of any of this because John never talked about it publicly, nor did I. So there's no way they could say that, but that was their, that was their line of reasoning is that, oh, Phil doesn't pay John, okay? So one day, I'm sure I got annoyed, like, like Howard says, I take the troll bait. I got annoyed, and on a stream, I say... Listen, I was fair. I paid John 50%. Was it a lie? No. It was saving face. Howard is correct. I was trying to save face. I was trying to justify that you can't tell me the reason John doesn't want to be in my stuff today is money. He was always paid fairly. I shouldn't have done that. Another mistake I made. There is no, there is no reason to even address anything about money publicly on a YouTube, YouTube video. Yeah, and this is done way before there was any kind of pr for yeah. before there was major problems. Just something that's thrown out, like, "Oh, look, I'm a great guy. I'm giving him half the money." Yeah, that I get. Um, it's not exactly the truth. Okay, so he starts doing YouTube stuff in 2008. I do there's some of it. You know, I start doing videos with him. That's Street Fighter vlog. We've been hanging out for a couple years go. before that, playing games. So just kind of transition into now we're going to be playing games, but recording games. You know, um, and I did this stuff for from 2008. When he started YouTube, I did this for probably a couple years for nothing. He, saw he says he did it for a couple years for nothing. That's correct. Any videos that he appeared in before I was able to monetize those videos, he didn't get paid for. I was only able to monetize the gameplay videos in early 2011 when I got partnered with Machinima. So any videos he appears in prior to that, he didn't get paid for. Also, I didn't get paid for them either. I on with Machinima a few years later. <clears throat> And I had to come to him and ask, because we're, we're still doing videos. I said, since you're getting something for this, do you feel that I should get a percentage of that mm -hmm. for my efforts on here, right? Mm -hmm. So we make a, an agreement. By the way, he said, I had to come to him and ask. He says it like I was, he was doing these videos for an extended period of time, and I was not paying him, and then he had to ask for the money. No. Once I got partnered, it was pretty quick. I don't, I can't exactly tell you when. I could tell you it was relatively quickly after I got partnered and he was regularly doing the co-op with me. And then we started seeing the results. Oh, the views were good. There's money coming in. And then he said, hey, can I get paid for that? I said, absolutely. You are 100% entitled to getting paid. You're part of this content. 
It wasn't like, oh, I did it for months and months and I had to then ask him and beg him for money. That's not what happened. The way he says that makes it sound like that and that's not what happened at all. <clears throat> the fuck? Which will be basically half of the month. Half of the month's co-op income. So what happens is he takes out taxes from that amount um, mm -hmm. and cuts it in half. So Fair. Get half of that. But... For instance, like if it's March and we do videos in March, mm -hmm. I will get a percentage of what was made in March. That does not include residuals like for months coming up. Like for instance, if those videos make more money in April or or, mm -hmm. or uh, June, July, okay, like that doesn't include that. So whatever was made in April for that month, that's what I would get. It does not include streams or whatever other money comes in, right? Yeah. This went on for a little while. Okay. So let's address this because this is the part one, then there's a part two to it where the agreement changed. Okay. Here's the full story for context. I was working with Machinima as a partnered member, and that means that I would put out videos. Dependent on the views the videos got, I would make a flat rate of money per a number of views on a video. Machinima would keep all the ad revenue and give me that flat rate. Most cases, they were making more money on the ad revenue than what they were paying me. That's how they made their profits, and they made a living, basically. They were making the money on the ads. I was getting the flat rate payments, okay? So, John is correct. What we would do, we would do a month of content, okay? Now, by the way, people seem to have this very weird conception or notion that YouTube is this big corporate entity that runs crazy amounts of tracking and reports and has all this data that is completely false, okay? Especially back then, we're talking like 2011. Here's how I got paid and here's how I figured out any data. I got paid by a PayPal payment, one lump sum a month. There you go. There's your money. Okay, what is this? Is this revenue from one channel, other channels, all channels? Oh, that's just all your revenue. So I don't even know the money coming in What's it from? Is it from DSP Gaming? I had other channels running. Or is it from the other channel? I don't know. Here it is. Lump sum. Okay. So how do I figure out what made what? Especially back then, there was no way to figure that out on YouTube. There was no analytics tab on YouTube. It didn't exist. There was no way to figure out how much money a video made. Okay. What you would have to do is manually sort videos and start counting views and shit. So it was a nightmare. I was like, dude, with the amount of co-op videos we're pumping out, Right? We're doing every week we're doing a co-op. That's what? 20, 30 videos plus smart guys. Like we're talking, we'd have to track a hundred more videos a month to figure out what we're making on these specific videos. So I started contacting Machinima behind the scenes, and I made a request of them that they thought was ridiculously outlandish. I said, Hey guys, you're the ones who have all the data. You're the partner network. You're tracking videos. You have access to all that data. Can you, on a monthly basis, start sending me reports on videos? And, you know, can I use those reports to pay? Well, I, I here's what I told them, which is kind of stupid. I said, I need these reports to pay my employees. I got some people here working with me, and I have an agreement, a business agreement with them, okay? And I need to be able to pay them. And if I don't know what videos are making, I can't pay them. So Machinima, on a monthly basis start sending me reports that are the most stupidly ludicrous reports I've ever seen. Is it a Excel file that I can sort and search and, and, and do stuff with, right? Is it anything that I can do anything with actively? No, it's a fucking PDF file. Uneditable, unsortable. It's just like as if someone right now handed you a piece of paper with printed text on it. That's what they're sending me, okay? So here's what we would do. We would wait for a month to pass Okay, and the next month, we would sit down when they send me the monthly report, and we would say, what were the co-ops we did last month? And we would figure it out. Okay, here's what we did. And we would, I would, I would not John, I would go there line by line and count up the amount of money that those videos made because that's exactly what the report was. What, what we were, what I was paid for that video by Machinima that month. So I would go through all of that. And sort it myself, add it up, subtract taxes, which we knew what the taxes were. I knew what I was paying my tax guy and everything, you know, for the taxes. Here's the profits. And I would cut it right down the middle, 
and I would give that to John on a monthly basis, okay? Now, he's absolutely correct. There was no residuals paid, okay? And there was a reason for that. It was actually a discussion that we had. It wasn't like, oh, we never talked about it or whatever. We did have a residuals discussion. He said, is there any way to figure out residuals? I said, well, John, the only way we can figure out residuals is literally if every month, not only am I going to sit down and look at the new videos we make, but now I have to request reports on previous months from Machinima, and I have to sit down here and crunch those numbers too. And we did this actually once and found out that the residuals, unless it was a giant playthrough, the residuals were essentially nothing. All right? A few dollars. Okay? Now, you might say, well, it's a few dollars is a few dollars, right? I mean, hell, if, he'll, if he's coming over your house every week and doing co-op, what's fair is fair. Pay him what you're owed. We had this conversation. And the conversation was, okay, well, we're going to do this co-op content, but also there's going to be things that come up, <clears throat> right? Sometimes we're going to do other things. We're going to go on trips. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And not to say that it was a contract we made. We didn't. This contract was never, by the way, no contract was ever made between us. There was no written contract. He didn't sign. I didn't sign. This was just our agreement that we did. We just did it. We were friends. We didn't think that anything could, could go wrong. And my God, if any, ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. No, really. Please listen to me right now. Okay. If I can give you one piece of advice out of this whole situation, this whole fucked up situation, this is it right now. This moment. Stamp, clip this part, okay? It doesn't matter if you're friends with someone. If you are entering a business arrangement with someone, you must document it and you must have a contract. Period. Because this is not the first or last time that an entire friendship has been negatively affected and in some cases torn apart by a business relationship. All right? I know ex examples of this. For example, <clears throat> ScrewAttack.com, which doesn't exist anymore, was a very prominent website on the internet for people who make content about video games. There was two guys who were in charge, Stuttering Craig and Handsome Tom. Sadly, the same thing happened with them that happened with me and Rambo, where we, they had kind of agreements, and they, they weren't necessarily contract. And then after years of working on this content together, they had a massive disagreement of falling out. They split, and now they hate each other, essentially. Okay? It's fucked up. They were like the closest guys, you know? And... The public saw that unfold, saw them have their relationship be broken, fractured, and split over the business. You know, I don't necessarily think that's exactly what happened here. <clears throat> I think that's one of the factors. Obviously, John would not be bringing this up if it wasn't a factor, right? He'd be ignoring it. It's a factor to him or he's not going to address it. But we didn't ever have a contract. So he can say all of this and I can say all of this, but there's no evidence of any of it, right? It's all hearsay. <clears throat> all I can tell you is I'm corroborating what he's saying. Yes, it's true. There were no residuals. Why was there no residuals? Because there was no way to figure them out. There was no, oh, can I have someone take data from YouTube and crunch a spreadsheet and figure out this and this and actually pay them? What we had was kind of an unspoken agreement. Okay. Um, and the unspoken agreement was that for the extra stuff, here's the thing on YouTube, how it works. When you first upload a video to YouTube, especially back then, maybe today it's a little different. Back then, you would upload a new video to YouTube. That video would get a ton of bright, hot new ads on it. You make tons of money on the ads. As soon as that went away, the ads would stop running and you'd make almost nothing on the video. So if a video is not monetized, you make no, no money on it. So we would do a, a playthrough, a hot new co-op playthrough. The first few weeks, we'd make tons of money. All right? After that, the next one, two months, almost nothing. Because the ads aren't running on it anymore. Those ads are now running on all your hottest new uploads. Okay? Always. Why do you think I pump out so much content? Right now, if I were to not make any new content this month, I would make almost nothing on ads on YouTube. That's how it's always worked. Okay? Don't care what anyone else wants to tell you. In my experience, that's always been the case. <clears throat> so, we have a situation here where I would have loved to pay him residuals, but we didn't know how to figure it out without an insane amount of number crunching and work for what essentially was going to amount to very little. All right? So... The unspoken rule, I mean, it wasn't that we put it down on writing, but we talked about it, is, all right, well, there's going to be situations where we're going to go on trips, right? I'm going to arrange for us to go to a convention. I'm going to arrange for us to go on, on a, a trip that I'm going to vlog or whatever. And the arrangement was that even though he wasn't getting paid any residuals for the content, I would try to pay for as much of that as possible, whether it was a hotel room, whether it was gas for his car, because he was driving, but I would pay for the gas, whether it was 
plane tickets in some cases. That was kind of the, the rule that we had. I had I was the one making the money here, right? I would pay him 50% of the co-op income and anything else that came of it would be in another form and in, maybe intangible form, but you'd be able to go on trips and stuff. Like that's how what the agreement was, okay? Um, <clears throat> he never complained. He never had a problem with it whatsoever. And this started essentially in early 2011 when I was partnered with Machinima. I can't tell you the exact date, but I believe it was about mid to late 2013 when this changed. And he's going to reveal how it changed, all right, right now. So let's continue. Again, it's not exactly 50% if you throw that out there, but this goes on for a little while. Then he says to me, Machinima isn't sending me reports anymore, so I have no idea. I have no idea the, the amount of money that we're making on the co-op. I have no way of figuring it out. So I can, I can no longer figure out this percentage that we agreed on. So I basically just go, okay, listen. Throw me $100 every time I come down. I'm going to let him talk. Okay. Say the whole thing. And the way I come to this number is because round trip, it's about two and a half hours of driving. Right? I'm there the entire day, and uh, I have to buy a meal at some point. So give me a hundred bucks to kind of oh. cover my expense. You also have to consider, you know, these are days like I'm, I'm not going to work because my job, and I'm, in, I'm an independent contractor, so I'm not going to work these days. So if you really do the math, uh, with gas and food and uh, wear and tear in your car, you know, a hundred dollars every time you come, you're not exactly profiting there. And, in, and including not going to or working at a job which will actually make you more money than, than this, you know. Yep. So just to flat out say you got 50%, it's, uh, it's far from true. It's far from the truth there. Like, it's ha I guess it's half truth. It's a half truth. Is that what you would say? Yeah, it's a half truth. You know? Um, so when people want to throw their stuff out there, man, all like mm -hmm. you went to conventions and uh, we paid for things. Again, like you go to conventions, you got to take time from work. Which is, I'm not getting paid for work. Um, and we went to conventions, so he's got a, an injury. He has a back injury. So I would go and I would carry things. I would uh, film things. Uh, I did all the driving, as you, as you know. <laughs> uh, and I'd do whatever I could to help. I was, I was coming as, not, it's not just like, hey, Phil, take me on this trip. And I'll fuck around and I'll sit by the pool. You know, it was, uh, you know, came as basically to assist him in his business, as he likes to call it, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of passive aggressive stuff and what all that stuff he just said. A lot of passive aggressive stuff. The business, as he likes to call it. Um, oh, he has a back injury, or so he says, his back, right? Yeah. I, all, I mean, everything there. I, everything I ever said was true. I had a back injury. It was severe. Um, the thing is, I'm very, very good at hiding pain, right? You guys couldn't tell in my videos back then. Half the time when I was sitting around making a vlog, I was in shooting pain up my leg, numbness. Uh, it was bad, all right? Um, I had a business. I was paying taxes. I was doing everything like you have to do with a business. But it's funny, all these insinuations, Right? Oh, yeah, what he calls a business. Ah, oh, that back injury he has and stuff. That's basically what he's saying by saying that stuff like that, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, I will 100% confirm everything he just said. Yes, what happened was in late 20... I want to say it was late 2013. I can't confirm that. But after over two years of me paying him that 50% cut, our arrangement changed. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of perspective, okay? One month... Okay. He, he, we're texting back and forth, I believe. And John's like, hey, I'm just curious. Did Machinima send you the report? Because actually I'm kind of hard up this month. I need some help. I, 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 can I get the money a little early? I was like, yeah, no problem, man. Let's try to figure this out. So I got, I get the report out and I'm doing it. It was like the middle of the night. Okay. I'm doing it. And I don't know. I fucked up. All right. I don't know. If we just had a really, really good month that month, I can't remember. But I remember doing it in the middle of the night, and it was like an exorbitant amount of money for both of us, split down the middle. It was like a ridiculous amount 
for a co-op. It was the most we had ever made on a co-op by far by like, I'm not kidding, like double. All right. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, could this be real? Did I fuck up? So I'm doing, I mean, it's the middle of the night. I'm tired. I'm fucking it. I'm probably fucking it up. Who cares? Right. I'm doing the math again. I do it again. It's the same. I was like, so I don't think I fucked up. I just think something happened. Maybe, maybe that particular playthrough got giant ads on YouTube for some reason, giant views for some reason. I don't know what it was. You know, I don't know why there was a time when we did, it might've been, Nah, I don't know if it was, but I know that we did a family guy playthrough and that playthrough had inflated views and we got overpaid for it, but I don't know if that was it. But anyway, there's this one time where he really needed the money and I said, okay, I'm going to send it to you. Okay. So I send it to him. All right. Five minutes pass. I get a frantic phone call. He goes, Phil, I think you made a horrible mistake. He goes, I, I think you sent me too much money. This is ridiculous. There's no way. I was like, no, John, I just did the math like three times. And that's really, you know, what you're owed for this month's work. He goes, no. He's like, no, there's no way. He goes, there's no way that that's, that's the amount. And I was like, no, it really is. And, and he's like, I, I feel guilty <laughs> taking this much for the work, for the playthroughs we did this month. You know, and what we're doing, we're fucking around. We're sitting around playing video games. He's like, we made this much money. I was like, John, listen, I want you to know something. I don't even care if I fucked up. I make good money here. You know, not only are we doing this co-op that's making crazy money, because these were the great years of YouTube when ad revenue was rolling. I told you how much money I used to make back then, insane amounts. And I said, there's so much money. I'm making, dude, I don't care. Just keep it. I don't even care if I fucked it up. Just keep it. You need it, dude. I'm your friend. I know this is kind of fucked up that it's a business relationship. We even have to talk about it. Just keep it. And he was happy, you know? So to me, when he's when he's bringing this shit up in a video like this, it's like it couldn't have been further, further from the truth of this. The, the, he's making it sound like it wasn't a good situation. It was a crazy good situation, man. It, he was so happy doing that co-op. I know he was. We had so much fun, and he was actually able to do things financially because he was making good money doing it, you know? And I, it, it just, it really irks me. It really irks me that he even talked about this in the video. When he says, oh, I was, I was treated fairly, but now I'm going to talk about this for a long time like I wasn't, okay? Now, the second half. He's talking about the $100 a week, okay? So, in late 2013, I think, I can't confirm this because I don't have the data anymore. Um, Machinima tells me they can't send me the reports anymore. They don't give me a justification as to why. They just say they can't. They also told me no one else under the partner network made those requests. I was the only person asking for that data and they don't have to provide it. So this is just one of the many cases over the years where Machinima's attitude towards me completely changed for no seemingly good reason. They were, we had a good relationship. They were sending me these reports all along, no problem. All of a sudden, oh, we can't do that. Why is he being so demanding of us that we wants this data? So they wouldn't give it to me anymore, okay? So if you don't have the raw data, all you can do is guess based off of views on YouTube, which is not reliable. Um, and we were trying to guess how much money videos are making or whatever. And John, after like a, a month of trying to guess and, and, you know, having difficulty doing it, said, all right, forget it. He's like, here's what we're going to do. Just pay me $100 a week. And I even said to him, I said, are you sure that's what you want? I, I, in my head, I had a ballpark number. I wanted to pay him around $250 a week to come do what he did because it was smart guys the commentary show and it was all the co-op we were doing and i knew that he was driving i knew it was gas cost involved both ways he lived in new york new york the state i live in connecticut there's exorbitant amounts of gas cost there probably he was paying 20 30 dollars i would think every couple of weeks for gas just for the trip okay um so i wanted to pay him more that was the ballpark i number i had in my head was around 250 a week Okay. And he said, no, I just want the hundred. All right. That's our agreement. We're going to do the hundred. By the way, I never offered him the 250. I got to clarify because now it's not, now I'm misconstruing it in a wrong way. Bullshit. Bad on you, Phil. Bad Phil. I got to call myself out on bullshit from now on. Bad Phil. I didn't offer him the 250. I asked him what he wanted and he said a hundred. The 250 was a number in my mind. I never said it. I feel bad now because I said that. That's a lie. That didn't happen. He wanted 100. I said, I will give you what you want. Okay? I should have paid him more. 
I didn't. Okay? So, from like late 2013 up until the time when I moved in mid-2014, he was getting paid about $100 a week for the stuff that we were doing. Keep in mind that all those other things like he just mentioned behind the scenes, conventions, I paid for the hotel rooms, I paid for gas to driving to those. When we went, just, just to give you some perspective, <clears throat> we went to E3 together in 2012, all right? I basically bullshitted Machinima and I told Machinima, listen, I need John to come with me to E3 because I need a cameraman because I have a debilitating back injury. Now, did I have a debilitating back injury? Yes. Did I need John to come to E3 with me to film and carry my shit? No. I could have done that myself. I bullshitted Machinima to get him into E3. I paid for his plane ticket myself because Machinima would not pay for it. They said all they would do is they would get him a pass. So I paid for his plane ticket to and from. Okay? Um, we went to, to WrestleMania. Okay? We knew going to WrestleMania in 2013 would not garner a lot of content for the internet because WWE was classically infamous for claiming content that you put out there from any of their live events. So I knew that even if I recorded footage at WrestleMania that it wouldn't make money. It wasn't, in my mind, that was not a business trip. That was a fun trip for friends, okay? I paid for the gas. He drove. I paid for the hotel room. I paid for the WrestleMania tickets. Those were over $1,000 each WrestleMania tickets, okay? I didn't care. This was fun stuff I was doing with my friend. I wanted him to be along for the ride with me, okay? I didn't want him to feel left out because I was the one with his name on the channel, I wanted him to come with me and, and share these experiences with me. The WrestleMania trip was not a business trip at all. It was a friend trip for us to go experience WrestleMania together. And sure, on the back end, come back and do a smart guys about it, right? But it absolutely positively was not that. And he's saying every trip we ever went on, he was my work guy carrying my stuff and filming. That is completely false. The only trip ever that happened was E3. Do you want to know why that happened to E3? Because we had to bullshit Machinima to get him his pass. So they needed to see him following me along, carrying my bags and equipment. They needed to see him recording some stuff that I was doing so that he, we wouldn't get in trouble for getting him into E3. Okay? Outside of that, it's actually completely untrue. Whenever we went to a convention, John could do whatever he wanted. I mean, yeah, he would be on the panel that we did at the convention to promote his own content that he was doing on his channel, whether it was his podcast or Schnozman and Hole Punch. I, I didn't demand that when he came to a convention, he could only talk about our, our content. That wasn't the intention. It was to, he could get free promotion for his own stuff. I got his foot in the door of all of these conventions and onto these panels to promote his content, okay? <clears throat> there was a, uh, a convention we went to, Screw Attack Gaming Convention in 2013, okay? I think it was 2013. I'm pretty sure it was. During this convention, I think I interacted with John Rambo a grand total of two hours. It was probably when we arrived, said hello, saw each other at the table that we had there a few times, and then when we were leaving. We didn't have the same hotel room. At that point, I was with my ex. We had our room, and he had his own room with Howard, okay, and OJ. Um, <clears throat> I was in, doing my own content. I was filming everything myself, everything that was filmed for the Iron Man of Gaming competition, I filmed, okay? Yet, he was there, I got him in, he had a table, he was had a, he had a panel with me, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he went and made so much content for his own channel. In this video, he acts like, oh, you gotta understand that even though the money was good and people can justify that the money, maybe even when it wasn't good, will feel paid for all those conventions and things, well, I was working the whole time. That's a lie. He worked definitely during E3, and everything else was us having fun as friends, okay? Everything else was, you know, like I said, that WrestleMania trip, there was zero work. There was no work. It was fun. So he is spinning this in a way that's, all right, not completely untrue because there's one time when he actually did do a significant amount of work because he, because we had to or else Machinima might say, hey, what are you, fucking lie to us about this guy, you know, filming for you or whatever? I told him he was my cameraman. Now, I needed that because I had a back injury, 
right? Outside of that, you it was always friendship. It was about friendship, me paying for everything because I was the one making all the money on the channel and friendship so that he could come with me. This statement he's making here is incredibly hurtful to me. Incredibly. Because it couldn't be further from the truth, at least from my perspective. Maybe that's how he saw it, but that wasn't what was happening. Um, I can't believe he says this. Really, I can't. Oh, every trip that we went was full work for me and I was taking days off of work. Dude, it was us hanging out. And I paid for everything because you were taking time off of work to do it. You, you wanted to go. You agreed to all of it. Like, why is this an issue later? Right? Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. I'm really, I'm actually really hurt by that statement that he makes there because that really makes it feel like all those times we had together that were friendly and I was doing my best to make sure that he could share in the fun of everything that I was doing as a result of being a YouTuber, that he would be part of it because I wanted him to be part of it because he was my best friend at the time. I really felt like this is like him just saying none of that ma mattered at all. None of it ever mattered. It was all bullshit. He didn't care. And I don't I don't believe that. I think that this is a video of him trying to, like I said, along with Howard, create kind of hit piece against me. And this is a messed up situation where he's trying to downplay all the great times we had that were not about being monetized. We're not about him filming and doing work for me. It was about us being friends and me paying for those fun times to happen. And he's like, oh, that's not a factor. Okay, you know. Whatever. You can believe me. You can disagree with me and, and not believe me. I don't care. I'm just getting it off my chest. Okay? So, again, it's not me. That wasn't me complaining about, like, I should have gotten this. I should have gotten that. Because he never else. did. It's just, like, again, it, it gets out there. He got half of what's made. But there's many more details in there that, uh, you know, are not, are not given. One so, final thing about it, because they're going to move on and start talking about Project 7 now, I believe. Um, by the end... Those last few months that I was in Connecticut and I was paying him the hundred dollars. Not that this even matters, but um, just doing basic math. Okay, our co-op stuff had completely fallen off. We basically had done all the big games. There wasn't many big games coming out. We were just weekly doing co-op. And between smart guys and uh, you know the co-op stuff we were doing and the money that those videos were essentially making from Machinima, I was paying him more. That hundred dollars I was paying him a week was actually more than what was being made on the videos. So he was coming over, and we were doing content for the sake of just keeping doing content and having fun. And I was paying him more money than I was than I was making. I was losing money on the co-op for about two, three months there at the end there, roughly. Okay? Um, all you got to do is look at the decline of my channel over the years, and you'll see the viewers go, boo, all the way down. And, yeah, those views monstrously declined on that stuff around 2014. Um... But I wanted it to keep going. And that's why I kept paying him. Let's get into this, man. I'll spend all day on this. Probably Here we go. go. Project hours seven. on this topic. Try to keep it down as much as we can. But we got to touch on Project 7. Because, again, there's things said publicly that kind of need to be, uh, you know, addressed. So Project 7, man, the version we were involved in. Oh, tell us a little bit like how it started, Howard. Man, these are your those are your guys. You know, actually, guess what? The food is here early. It says order complete. <laughs> oh, yeah, it just got delivered. So, I guess we're taking a break, <laughs> a really early break, because I ordered the food to show up at like four four thirty. It's three fifty one. It's already here. So, I guess let's do let's just uh, end the video. If you're watching this. On demand on YouTube. Apologies, because I was not expecting to end it there. But it's actually time to end this portion of the video. And there will be further parts, so go check them out. Thanks.